Permanent residents can now apply to join the Canadian Armed Forces. This follows warnings from the Canadian Military Senior Command about staffing issues and overall readiness in the face of foreign conflicts and domestic disasters. I am concerned about our, our capacity writ large given the um, significant number of demands around the world. Um, there's just not enough Canadian forces to be able to do everything. That was Chief of the Defence Staff Wayne Eyre speaking to my colleague Murray Brewster. So how does the military expect this new strategy to help boost recruitment levels? Major General Lise Bourgogne is the Acting Chief of Military Personnel. So, so Major General, I'd like to start with the need for this. Why the need to extend eligibility to permanent residents? Yeah, thank you, uh, David. That's a really, really good question. And I know that all of you have been uh, watching and hearing our Chief of Defense talking a bit of the issue that we have right now with reconstitution. I mean, we're tracking that we're about 8,000 uh, short of new members, which is about 10% of our effective strength. We're seeing also that uh, we don't have the number of applicants uh, showing up at our recruiting center or on forces.ca. Uh, uh, so, so far this year, our target was about uh, 5,900 new recruits, and we've only uh, enrolled about 2,800. So 47.5% of our objective this year. So honestly, when we're looking at reconstitution, we looked at uh, every option. And honestly, when you look at uh, permanent residents, you know, we keep talking about, um, you know, we, the CAF needs to be a representation of Canadian society. We look at diversity that actually enhance our readiness and in turn, our operational effectiveness. So the permanent residents are, are an, you know, an untapped market that we had not looked into before uh, because they bring important skills and they also bring a lot of diversity, which, was, which is what the CAF is after. So you mentioned you're about 8,000 short of a fully constituted regular force of 71,500 members. How, how many recruits do you hope to get from the permanent resident population? As many as possible, you know. Uh, again, like I said, we're about 48%. Uh, diversity is awesome, skilled applicant, and uh, the permanent resident, and actually a really good story, but uh, permanent resident has been open for five weeks, and we have we've had 2,400, so 2,400 new applicants from uh, permanent uh, residents. So uh, a huge success story here. Okay, well, one of my questions is going to be, you, you talked about the importance of diversity and, and what the permanent resident population of Canada can represent on that front. But some, some permanent residents, due to the circumstances in their country of origin, might have a bit of a mistrust for the military. Uh, so how do you overcome those particular obstacles when reaching out uh, to this new target uh, population? Well, I think, you know, uh, I think it, it's a super good consideration. I, I think we need to tap into the different community, the elders of the community, uh, looking at the diaspora, uh, discussing with them. We, we need to, you know, there's a lot of work that we're doing in CAF with our culture evolution. And honestly, we need everyone to help us uh, to be more diverse. So there's all kinds of things that we've put into place in the last two years. And hopefully those good news are coming across. Uh, but we need everyone everyone to come and help us more diverse, more inclusive, because uh, we need that capability for the future. Because you have this capability challenge while you're also going through this cultural transformation. And I mean, wonder how much of an obstacle is, is the need for the culture change uh, to dealing with the capacity gap? I, I mean, can you fix your recruitment challenges sort of before you fix the cultural issues that everyone from the minister, from the chief of defense staff says needs to be done? Yeah, it's like the chicken and the egg yeah. kind. And and we need to, yeah, and it's a good question, but we need to do both, okay? We need uh, we need diversity to join the CAF to help us become more diverse and more inclusive. And of course, we need all kinds of initiative. And I think we've delivered on a whole bunch of initiatives. Again, uh, the new dress, the new inclusive leadership that we've, uh, you know, uh, the religious and faith holidays that we're showing that the CAF is, uh, is, is pushing very hard for everyone that that joins to be valued and, and, and respected and be safe in the CAF. So we, you know, that's both side of the dime that we need to change or evolve our culture, but we need the diversity to help us to get there. So as, as I understand it, Major General, permanent residents who sign on get priority. 
uh, on the path to citizenship, correct? So is, is there a minimum number of years of time served and time enrolled to, to sort of trigger that uh, accelerated path to Canadian citizenship? Well, I think, you know, and again, IRCC would be better than me to answer this, but uh, from what I'm tracking is five years uh, for your permanent resident to your Canadian citizenship. But uh, any anybody, any permanent resident that joined the CAF will be, uh, after the five years, will be bring uh, or brought accelerated for their path to Canadian uh, citizenship. So it's good news for them, and it's uh, really, really good for us also. Are you worried, though, that this, it becomes a five-year commitment then, that maybe people see this as a path to the front of the line on the citizenship thing? I mean, obviously, you would want to invest in the training of a soldier to last beyond the five years. So I, I guess recruitment is one thing. The retention component is the other part of it, right? So that it's not just sort of a, a skip to the front of the line? Yeah, indeed. And, you know, like I joined the military a long, long time ago to get a degree, a free education, and I was going to go and quit and join the civilian uh, Mac market. And it's been 35 years and I'm still in. So I think that if we get them through the door, we'll get them interested and, and they will have a great career. The CAF has so much to offer in, in you know, uh, making a difference, uh, the training, compensation and benefit, the adventure, the camaraderie. Uh, it's a great career. And I think you know the first step is to get in get them into the door and then we'll keep them okay major general lise borgon thank you so much for your time thank you very much there david